Hi everyone, welcome back to week four of our online classes for the abstract painting class. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Cara Bryan. I'm up here from South Lanarkshire Council, uh, Leisure and Culture. And this is week four, so we're just going to do the kind of abstract. It's kind of abstract, but there's more sort of subject on it. Um, and I'm just going to do that on here. So there's a lot of detail in it. Don't know how much I'll get done, but we'll, we'll get as much as we can and I might go back to some little bits at the end. So we'll get started. But first of all, I'll introduce you to the materials that we're going to be using. So we've got our usual brushes that we've been using. We've got a big flat brush, nice bristle head on it. Good for the sky. And it doesn't matter if it's a round one that you've got, that's okay. And then we've also got a nice wee smoothie. Is that a thick pointy one? It's like a number six or an eight, equivalent to that anyway. That's for doing a lot of nice wee details and smaller things as well. And I've got a wee small flat edge brush, which is good for marking out and all the wee sharp edges as well. And then you've got your little detail brush. So usually that's all you would need uh, to complete a picture like this. So this is a palette that we'll be using, and I'll have a wee spare palette here just to mix some colours and I'll show you how I go about them. So to start off with, we've got our titanium white, a little bit of Payne's grey. There's no order to this palette, it's just been, some of it's been taken off another palette, so it doesn't, there's not any orders to it at the moment. So we've got our titanium, our Payne's grey, our yellow ochre, lemon, and this is a nice light red. It can be cadmium or scarlet, whatever. You should have a light set uh, in your set, a light colour in your set, and a deep one. This is crimson. So crimson is good for mixing up like lilacs and things like that. Whereas the these are this is a warmer tone, and you, you wouldn't get as nice a lilac with that colour. But I'll show you that when I'm mixing. And this is burnt umber, and this is a uh, phthalo green, and this is serenium. Now you might not have this in your pack. But it doesn't matter, I'll show you how to mix that with some of these other colours. And this is ultramarine. Okay, so we're we'll using all these colours. Okay, so we'll just get started. So we're going to use just this little brush here. Um, and I'll do all the marking out with this and then we'll get into the sky with the big brush. And then I'll probably need to sit down and do a wee bit of detail and work through that. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. So, plenty of tissue. Uh, I'm just going to always use a kind of darker blue. It's quite good for marking out. So, as per usual, I usually go from top to bottom there to find a halfway line on my paper. I've got a wee mark there just to let you see. And then somewhere at the top end there, halfway again, is like the top where my horizon line is. So, another wee halfway mark. So, that's an easy way to find where you're going to put your horizon. So, halfway. We neck there, which I don't need, it's just a guide. And then another wee halfway mark there. Now, I only need just a little bit. I'm not bothered what that looks like at the moment, just a, it's just a guide for the sky because I'm maybe moving little bits of this around. But it's just to get our sky and give us an idea how much sky that we're using. Okay. Um, I think we'll just mark these things out as I'm coming to I think we'll do the sky first and then we'll just work our way down. That's just sort of usual way that I work anyway. So it's a bit easier. So I'm just going to take my big brush, dip it into a bit of water, but not soaking, just dab it off a little bit. If you've got nice pale colours in the sky, white's always good for a, a good base, but you wouldn't see that. So I'm just going to start with a wee bit of lemon and then warm it up with a little bit of your uh, But I try not to put the most of this, this picture, I mentioned earlier that we're working from where our light source comes from. So this picture is mainly about your light source and your reflections. So the bit of that. So if you go to the middle there, I've not got it bang in the middle, it's just off to the left a little bit. So I'm going to try and keep it that way. But it's projecting quite a lot through the middle of the picture and on the, the right hand side. It's coming from the left, so it's projecting onto the right hand side. And as it's coming down here, it's just a little bit on the left, just because it's in shade there. Okay, so I'm just going to get started, but you won't see this right away. I'll just kind of start once I get colours on it, you'll see it a bit. So I'm just going to sort of project this to the left a little bit. And some of these yellows are quite nice for just like 
putting down as a wee base under your blues, it gives you that nice turquoise colour. Okay, so I'm just going to brush the lines always a bit strong, but for the most part you're going over a lot of your colour with white anyway, because you're always going over and over bits and skin. So here we go, a nice white base round about my colour. And that's a good way for mixing colour onto your picture rather than on your palette. If you get a nice white base and it's still wet, your colours tend to mix right away on here instead of trying to take up water and on your palette trying to mix. Remember you're around in little circles as well, that covers all your canvas grains. There's a nice curry. And it's not that I'm leaving it in circles, you can, once it's on you can move it around just soften that in a little bit. So I did see I was going to warm that up just a tiny little bit with the yellow curve. And this will be quite strong, so it's just a couple of wee dabs. And while it's nice and wet like that, just powder it in. You can do it with a brush with your finger, but if you are using your fingers, remember always put your protector on your fingers first, or um, wee bit of beeswax or something just to protect your skin. So, there you go. A little bit warm up there, a little bit up there. Okay, but you can use a wee soft brush or a tissue. Another thing for blending in the sky as well is if you put too much of any colour on, we shot cut is just to use a wee baby wipe because it's giving a bit moisture in it and it'll just take a little bit off without taking it all off. So nice light here. I'm keeping it over to the, the left a little bit, but it's projecting down the middle, so not too far away from the middle. Now, so you maybe not see an awful lot of that there until I start putting my blues on now. So I'm just going to clean my brush and I'm going to use this palette and I'm going to show you how to do some blues. So if you've got the set of paints that was provided in your pack, you probably don't have Serenium Blue. But you've mostly always got field green or viridian, which is, they're all kind of jadey greens, so you can take a little spot of that, put it on your palette. See, that's quite turquoise you're looking ready, and all you need is just a little bit of ultramarine, and then you can peel it down with a bit of white if you like. So that gives you a nice turquoise, so you can get a bit more blue in it. And just keep taking from each one until you're happy with the colour. So there you are, that's not too far away from that one. Okay, so that's quite a nice colour for getting a nice base in the sky. So because this is still wet, so it's drying in very quickly, it's quite warm in here, so acrylic dries quick as you know, so sometimes you have to catch it quick. So I'm just putting little bits about there. What you could do as well, you could dampen your cloth just a little bit. And just wet it a little bit there, just enough to let you move that around. And that gives you nice powdery skies. We'll be putting some darker tones in there as well. So you're just kind of moving this around. Still nice and moist here, so I can move some of this around here. Just going to wet that in a little bit. Don't use your cloth too much so that the particles may come off, it's just enough to damp it. And sometimes less is more if you just use little bits like that, you don't need an awful lot. It's got so many other colours still to put in there. And that should be a bit of turquoise looking in. And obviously the more colour you put round about here, the more it'll bring this up. So I'll be putting other blues in there but just to get me toned. Yeah, okay, so without cleaning it, I'm just going to go straight in now to a little bit of ultramarine. And I'll just put the ultramarine just at the edge of my mix because I'm still picking up a little bit of it. Um, 
and I can put me bits in the sun. Same idea. Now, as soon as you put a darker colour over the light colour, I'll show you here, it will bring up the light colour and it gives you a nice wee sense of transparency there in the sky. And if you get a little bit of this round about the edge, I might even put a tiny little bit of paint grey into that. Just a little bit. And that's enough to darken that just a little bit more. And that gives you a nice frame round about the edge. And it makes you feel as if you're sort of looking into the view a bit more. A bit more. Sometimes you can, this is paint grey, so there's blue and black and white in that, so. That wee bit blue is just enough in the paint grey sometimes just to do that. So I can practice some of that, but so the, the grey is quite nice because it makes it look nice and cloudy. Uh, it's not it breaks down the blues a little bit, it's not too sharp. What's really good as well, if you put a little bit of Payne's Grey at the edge there, just to make it a bit darker. And then just tip a little bit of white, just at the end of your brush, maybe just about there. And that's quite nice for making it nice and cloudy as well. I'll put another wee bit up there somewhere. So you can go back and put detail on that if you like, it's entirely up to you, what way you want your sky to look. So I want to get quite a lot of colour around about this light just to project the light a bit more. So I'm going to clean my brush and then get a clean tissue. These big brushes hold a lot of water so you'll be through a lot of tissue. I'm just going to enhance it with some more whites in the sky. But not too bright, as long as this is wet, it'll pick up some of these colours underneath like that. And this is your bright here, so you don't want anything brighter than that, so we'll just keep that round about there and there. So I'm going to get a bit of colour round about here. So one of the other colours that's in the sky you'll see here is lilac. which I tend to put in most pictures. So I'm going to show you now how to mix up that lilac. You should maybe have a lilac, in fact I think you do have a purple in your set, but it doesn't matter, it's always good to make your lilac because sometimes, because you mix it with pink and blue, sometimes you might want it a bit more pinky and sometimes you might want it a bit more bluish. So for that reason it's good just to mix it. So I'm going to take some white on here, and ultramarine is a nice strong blue, so that's that gives you a nice kind of denim blue first. And as I mentioned earlier, don't use the scarlet red because that will tend to go a bit brownish. So if you use a red that's a bit more pinkish, like crimson, now crimson is really strong, so that will go really red. So the volume of that was just a bit too much there, but that's okay. Just showing you how that can happen. And also take plenty of blue. Bring that back, gives you a nice purple. Now sometimes purple like that, it can be a bit too sweety on its own. So if you want to turn it down into a kind of mauve, you can put a little bit of brown in it or a little bit of grey, just whatever you want. But for now, I'm just going to add a little bit of white at the end of it, but don't take the white all the way through it. So it gives you the choice to go back to your palette and you can use that for other tones. Okay, so if you just put a little bit of right in there. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just kind of tap round about here with a brush. And what you can do is you can take your smaller brush if you want and just dampen it. See if you use your fingers all the time. And just kind of soften that. 
in a little bit. Now that's quite solid looking at the moment, but I'll be breaking that down with some whites and some other colours. So there's a bit more of this over here, and sometimes just what's on the brush is just enough. I don't really want too much, because I want to see my other colours underneath. It's drying very quickly, it's very warm on here today, so it's really drying quickly this. So you can pick up a little bit of white. If you feel you get me hard lines like that, just tap little bits of white like that and just mould them in and that gives you the nice kind of powdery clouds. And then uh, pattern a little bit on there. So I say I want to see the blue and I don't want to totally block it. Like when I was doing this, I actually went over some of this when this bit was all completely finished because this is like the, the sort of half coming into the harbour here. So we'll do a bit more of that later on. So yeah, that's a bit sweetie looking that. So what I might do is put a little bit more brown into it now, but I don't want to cover it all in brown. So I'm just going to use this little corner here. And just to let you see that, I'm just going to put a little bit of brown into that. and it, Tones it right down almost to a grey. So I've still got my nice bright silvery line look and I've got a nice kind of mauve colour there now. So I only want to be tiny bits because as I say when it's all finished I'll be putting this kind of mist the kind of hair over here. So I'll be a bit more of this. And that just kind of breaks down the sort of sweetie line look a wee bit. Um, so I'm going to be white in this brush, so if it's too hard at the end, just soften it in your white. And there's no harm at all, wee bits of white just going through. So you can spend ages on a sky, but one of the things, if you just get a kind of base sky in first, do all your objects and then go back, do your subject and then go back and see what you want to do because if you're doing a Lisa Island here, and that's got to be dark so that your mist will come up over the top of it. But if that's too pale, you're, it won't look in, it won't look as if you've done a wee island there. So you want to keep those things nice and that's why you don't want to overdo the sky, because there's wee bits still to go back in there. But just while I've still got this on here, I'm just going to put another wee tiny bit up here. And it just kind of balances these out. I'll get a wee tiny bit of honey on this with water, so. I don't want your sky being too busy either. But what I'm trying to do here is get some colour to break down into where that light is coming from. So that even though there's colour here, it's quite subtle. I don't bring up the light. So this is a smaller brush, so it's not going to hold so much water. So I can go round about wee bits, just smoothing it in, because it won't, it won't really take away anything else that's on the skin. My yellow will still be there as well. Okay, so it might a tiny wee bit of my look there as well. So you can see all the blue pushing back now into the background of it. But it's still there. Okay, so I think we'll go back to the sky. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use my flat brush. I'll just get them cleaned it out and I'll use my flat brush. And it's quite good that I still get those colours on my palette because I'm going to use a little bit of brown into that lilac. Like, just mix a bit more of that lilac up. You just got to really watch the crimson. I meant to say that earlier. The crimson can ruin a picture. It's so, so strong. Um, you've just got to be really careful with it. So that's the lilac like, I've made up there. And I've put a wee bit more white in it just to make it a wee bit more subtle. Because obviously these are in the background, but I might have to go in a wee bit stronger. As I said earlier, they've got to be strong enough to bring up the mist. So I'm just going to put a wee line below my horizon there. Really scribbling. And now, 
and just print up and over the horizon a little bit. And I've left a couple of these spaces there because I might want to go in there with a little bit of green and a, bit, a wee bit more of that colour just under the horizon there at that side as well. So I would say that's sharp enough, as long as it's a good bit sharper than the sky. If you have the picture and quarter it again, in fact I've just left a wee map, so that's ideal. So in this wee quarter here, just below the skyline, you've got these wee houses here. Um, so if you like, you can half it, quarter it, just give yourself a wee mark there, and between the middle there. So between, you don't want to get too near the centre, so I'm just going to give myself a wee mark there. So roughly, that's where I'm going to be putting some of my houses there, and I'll go back to that in a minute. It's up to yourself when you put them in. I suppose we could mark some of them out quite faint in this colour now. So basically all you're doing here, there's a wee space here for a couple of boats, and I think there's a wee jetty goes out there as well. So if you're like halfway across it, you can put a wee jetty out there than out. And we'll go back to that. Now, the wee houses are just like wee matchboxes with a sun, really. So the wee flat brush is good for this. So a wee line, a wee line, a wee roof, a wee apex bit. Like that. And then just close it off at the top. So sometimes you're just using a corner of the brush. Um, and maybe just, you can almost overlap some of the wee roofs. You can colour them in this colour as well. Uh, I'm not even going to copy that, I'm just, there's no detail in it really. Um, you just want a wee bit of activity going on there with some houses and things. And the wee boat sheds. Some of them are houses and I think there's wee boat sheds near here. So I think there is one, if I can mind, there is one that sits here, just over the wee jetty a bit. Just colour that roof in. So I'll go back to them. They're very, very vague and loose at the moment, so you don't need to do much at all. Just watch they don't get too big though. But I'm going to show you a thing that if they do end up getting too big, I'm going to show you a wee thing that you can do to bring that down. So they're kind of sitting at a wee angle all the way up there. And once I go over that wee dark bit, I'll put some light bits on it. Um, but one of the things that makes this a wee bit easy to do as well is once we cover all the background in there, I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to clean that brush and I'm going to take a little bit of the Payne's Grey or brown, you can mix brown in it as well. And it's just for a wee bit of foliage. Now it's quite dark so you can put a wee bit of yellow in it. And it gives you almost like a sap, a dark sap green. So, all I'm going to do here is, is go round about all my wee rooftops. This shatters them up, but at the same time you can make some wee bits of foliage as well. So go down them. And if you feel that you've made your houses or your buildings too big, this can define them back down as well. So this is quite good to do this. And it's all green now, but I'm going to give you some darker stuff in a minute. So you can put some of that in between and also that brings it a bit nearer to the eye that they're not sitting right up on the horizon. Okay, so you can do a wee bit of brown into that just to dull the green down a bit, a bit more of yellow. Which looks more of a kind of natural green. And where the rooftops are, you can just, after you've done this, you can lighten them up a wee bit, but also you can give them with a wee bit of paint grey on its own. And again, just bring that down in between the wee buildings, and that sharpens all that up. So you could go on and on and on doing all that and colouring all your wee rooftops in. So that would take quite a while, so I'll maybe do one or two of them and then just let you use do the one you're on. I'm going to take a wee bit of yellow curve and a little bit of the bright red this time. And this might be a bit bright, but I can go in with some brown and things later on. So we've just got a couple of wee colours on them first. Okay. 
I don't know if you do, it can be a bit of more that you've made up. And that just tones them down a little bit. Right, so we can go back to the, I'm still using the B flat brush for that. So it just gives us a wee bit of perspective of what's going on now. So I think before I do any more detail now, we'll go back and do the water and then we'll go back and fill in some of these and then we'll go back and do some more detail to that. So all good. So my water's getting a bit dirty now, so I'm just getting some fresh water here. And again, some white, and just the way we started the sky, um, I'm starting a tiny little bit of yellow, not too much in this. Just worry about you. This gives you a chance to sharpen up any lines here as well. Just a little bit. Right, so right over here can get into some of the blue that I've made up. Basically, just mixing it up and cleaning your brush on it, really. Get plenty of white in it. The white's good for soaking up your canvas as well. And it keeps it nice and smooth. So the bigger the brush for this, the better. The water's a wee bit more shallow over here, so we'll keep it quite fine over here now because we're putting a wee bit lemon through that to give it that little bit of transparency in the water. That's what makes it look really shallow there, so we'll stick with that. So as I say, plenty of white. You just slap the white on here. Some people work with sponges and things like that, or great big household brushes with great big areas like this. But we'll just stick with this and I'll just get a bit under that colour. I'm getting quite a wee bit out of that colour that's sitting there. So I'd like to try and get it a wee bit more um, sort of greenish there now, but just before I do, I'll get a tiny wee bit of lemon, and this might even be enough to give me that. If you don't want it too strong, put a wee bit, oops, I've got a wee bit yellow picked up there. I think I've got a wee bit liquid from my paint running into the two colours there. I think that's how that's happened there, so I'll take a fresh bit of white. But what I was going to say, if you don't want your yellow to be too strong, because it is quite strong, just dip it in a wee bit of white to be safe. And then just where the light is, a wee bit more of it. And a tiny wee bit more now, a wee bit stronger around about here. I'm just really fair on it. Because I've got white down there, the white kind of tones it right down, right away for me, so that makes it easier. That's what I mean about putting white down first, it just makes it so easy to mix on the board. So I've got a wee bit of pale blue there, and a wee bit of lemon, and you can see that's mixing into a nice wee sort of aqua tone there. Which I'm looking for right about here. So I can go a wee bit stronger with that tone now, so I'm going to mix up a little bit more of this. So start again with white and a little bit of fairy green. So it's like kind of minty green, jade or mint, whatever you want to call it, with your white and then some of your ultra green. Okay, so put more of that coming in here. While it's wet, just soften the wee bits in the middle. We want to keep that nice and light down there. And there is quite a lot of wee bits of the yellow coming through, so it's a good idea just to have some of that made up. So that's nice and lightly colour, so that's good. That's a good wee base for underneath your blue. There's quite a lot going on here, and a lot that will be covered with our subjects. 
it's good to have it there. As well. Because I put this on nice and fine, it's not too thick, it will dry quick and it'll let me get in and do the bolts and all the subjects. Right, so I want it to go a bit stronger now at the bottom, so I'm going to just put a bit more of this. For just a bit of chrome out that I'm using in colour, you probably always use a, a tiny bit more white than any of the colour, but you're just tiptoeing in each colour till you get it what you want it to be. It's getting a bit stronger now, so I don't want to lose that again. So just, when you're wetting your brush, just wet the tip of it so that the whole brush isn't getting soaking wet. And that just gives you enough moisture to work with to blend all that. If I leave that little bit of lemon there and go back up there with a bit more of the, the blue, that gives you a bit of transparency in the zone. Well. Now I suppose if you were using a bigger brush, you could do this much quicker as well. It's just what you get used to using. Some people don't like using big brushes. So I've got enough paint there now just to find that out. And I wouldn't get into the, these wee details until I've got my boats in, so this is just a base for now. So there's a bit more detail on this picture. I'm just going to make sure that every bit of my board's covered. It's not good to see bare bits of your board no matter what you're putting on it, just make sure it's all covered. Okay. And I'll just finish that one bit off there. Remember it's not in the centre, it's right bit there. Just make sure. This bit's a bit lighter. The lights that projects across here anyway with the, the half up in here. Okay, so that should be all right now. And I'll go back to my smaller brush, small flat brush again. And this is where I'm going to have to sit down and do a bit of this because it's a bit more detailed. So, just get it on that to dry, but what I can do with that is, if you look at where the halfway line is there, you can write across there, that's kind of where the harbour, the tip of the harbour ends, there's wee bits that project back here. So, we'll go to about half the board, which is about there. I'm just going to put a wee bit on this side there so that I can see that. So I really want my harbour coming out there and if you look at the middle it shouldn't really be sitting right on the middle, that's the kind of middle there so it's kind of going by the middle so that's good. So that's the middle bit there. So we want it just going past the middle a little bit so just left a wee mark there. So I'm just kind of mixing this up with the moss and the browns. So I've got a little bit of line there. And this just goes back at an angle. And if you look at the bottom of the picture, it's it's a good bit off the bottom, it's probably about a quarter of your picture where it ends. So that gives you any kind of idea where it's going. Right. You're better doing these bigger things standing up so that you can see where you're going. So once that goes up to the end, there like that, there's a wee bit, just make sure it's away from the middle, there's a wee bit coming down. And this will go a wee bit lower. And then down here a little bit, there's a wee bit comes out there, which we'll go back to in a minute. So that's 
sofa now or oh. in there with the brown. You can use green with the brown and it's quite nice because it makes it look a wee bit kind of mossy looking. Like. And I want that to be darker, it's just really wet now because underneath it's still a bit damp and it's picking up my light colour. So plenty of brown and the green. I'm going to give me a wee bit of peels grey just to get a wee sharp this one at the now. So if you want to mold out your paint, maybe dot it like that, set it like that and then pull it, it's still a bit wet, even at that. So we know, we know what that is and we'll go back to that. Okay, it looks quite long now because the boat's been in there, but by the time the top bit gets winding down, it'll be better than that before. Okay, and so we don't need to do the bottom at the now, it's just to be an idea of where things are going. Now this is just a picture that I've made up, it's just a harbour. It just reminded me of some of the Scottish harbours I've been in. So it's sort a of harbour up there. I'm not sure which one it is, but um, it's just to get the idea of these reflections and everything. So since it's still a wee bit wet, I won't get into the detail here, but I'll show you how to do these ones. These ones are quite quick and easy to do. So if you take a wee bit of your blue, you can mix it with your other blue if you like. Just to soften it. Now, I'm not bothered about the detail on these at all. So these are going to kind of sit that that be normal. I'll actually go along there a wee bit more. So these boats here, I'm just going to start off with a wee set of window. There's a cover in a brush through the roof, like that. A bit like a car, really. Windscreen, top of the, the boat, and then start another one just beside it. Top of the roof. Because all you're going to see on these boats here is really the tops of them. You can do one up a little bit higher. So these will get filled in, but mostly the white. Um, some come out a little bit more. So I'm not bothered about too much detail on these either. It's a good one skin. So you can get them even a little bit different as you go along. But all you're really seeing on that, you'll see all the sun shining on the, the tops of the boats. So that's all I'm looking for there. Okay, back and just loading that. So from now, I'm just going to, to make these stand out. As soon as you get your blocks in in the background, they stand out a bit better. So it's going to put a wee bit of block in there. And if you like, you can put a couple of wee bits in between them. Just make some stand out. But once, it'll, it'll just be a lot of colour in, colour rolling in white, with wee touches of blue and wee blue bin screen, so that's what will make that stand out. So I'm just letting the bottom part dry a bit more. So why not let that dry? You need a good white for this, so the titanium white is opaque and it's quite good for this. I've tried it with other whites and it just doesn't do anything. I had to keep going back and topping it up once they were dry. But this white should be okay. So that's the top slope. Now what I'll go back and do, there'll be parts of it in shadow and parts of it really, really bright with the sun. The parts that's in shadow will have blue on it and the bits that are bright We'll have the right, so I'll show you that now. Very 
very easy to wash them right here. So a wee bit, it's a wee bit damp. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is just put a tiny wee bit of blue on some of them. It's just a wee shimmer really. So some parts you need to let them dry and then go back to them. So this we sort of line with you, but it's quite nice here for doing a base on this. Because you can go back to that and put some wee browns and things on it. This almost joins in, just the way it's protruding here, it, it almost looks as if it's part of the front, but it's a wee bit further back. Okay, so we're going to clean the brush and we're going to start some of the boats now. I'm just, before I get, I'm giving it as much time as I can to dry here, but I can see a tiny wee bit of blue still to get in here because there's a couple of wee boats sitting here, so that makes it look nice and transparent there because you can still see the air a bit. You can still see my wee marker there, but I'll cover that in a minute. So you want some of this uh, blue around about the boats here so that they stand out. Once the white tops go into them, they'll stand out a bit nicer with the blue. And if you have anything you want to cover up, just put a wee bit of white over that, that will be fine. Okay, so there's nothing much to those wee boats, so I'm just going to put a wee outline in there. Again, I'll just use we mix them with brown and blue. It gives you a nice dark line. We can sharpen the wee jetty first. And again, there's a lot of wee shadows round about there, so we'll just kind of fill that in. I'll go back to that with a better colour. So just give a wee gap before the top of the jetty there, and you're just doing a couple of wee bolts. We can go back and put the shadow and detail on them. There's a wee flat bit there, and I suppose it's pointing that way with a wee bit coming up there. Okay, so I might go back in with a small brush with that. So that's where you wee point brush is handy. So again, try and don't do it too wet. The drier it is, the better if you're putting these two colours on, and it makes them nice and dark at the bottom. Just to be sort of lying through the middle. No detail because they're too far away for detail. And then you should clean your brush, same wee brush, put a wee bit of light on somewhere. So I've left a wee dark bit there as it's going round the corner and the white's just catching it there and round. So when that's dry, but if bits in this picture you'll go back when it's finished and put extra wee toppers of white things on it. And we'll put the sunshine on these wee bits. So we'll use a wee bit of the lilac and the dark blue. And we'll just put a couple of wee reflections under them now. The light coming in that way will project the shadows over to the left just a bit more. Now, I've still got these drops of water to put on there. Right, so I'm going to go back now to my little flat brush. And again, everybody's got a preference which brush to use for detail. Some people might want to draw out with that one, and some people might want to draw out with that one, just your own preference. So for the now, I'm just going to go back and get this a wee bit darker, even if it's just the top. So anything that's dark, preferably the, the green. And they're just kind of 
could not be able to pull that. You can only do that in year one as well. It makes you don't want it all looking exactly the same. Look at all of this going in round about your boats once you actually get the boats in as well. So that's going on a bit better now. This goes down a bit more now. So once these things come down, it brings it a bit closer to us now instead of looking away out into the middle of the sea. So this is a nice wee backdrop for doing anything um, light in front of it as well. It's quite nice, you can rearrange these whatever way you want. You can even set these wee boxes in front of it, whatever you want. So it's drying out quite a nice wee bit now. We can give them a wee bit yellow colour. So you can see me getting in the different colours here now. Very it. And each layer that you're going to work is in a bit darker, so that's, that's what you want here. The darker this is, the better your boats will come up. Put a bit of ultramarine, ultramarine and brown is almost like black, it's so dark. So once that's dried out a wee bit, they will give them a couple of impressions of the ladders and ropes. I'm going to set this in here. Now, the top, of, the top of it just overlaps a bit of that. So, I'm just going to do a reset of rectangle squash to the side here. And a bit like that. And now, uh, that gives you a wee window. And then you've got a wee base at the front. And then you've got this wee bit that kind of sticks up in line with the window up there. And then it sort of comes down and it goes round to the side. Right. So just before you go any further, dry your brush, clean it, make sure it's quite dry. And just so that you can see where you're going to get your roof in first. And it's up to yourself if you make that a window if you just block it. But I'll show you as we're doing this that all the right hand side of these with the light coming down there, uh, the lights are bouncing to the right a wee bit rather than the left because this is shadowing it, you see. So the light's going to come straight down and just hit this sort of left and a bit of the top of them. Okay, so while that's in there as well, you can give your pot a wee base. That's the first part then. And then just take that colour again. There's not much detail to it at the moment. You want to leave a wee space before you do the next one. So just come out like that. It's easier getting the, the little windows in first. And then you get a little base sort of coming down there. It sort of curves around there and then it goes a little bit straighter. And then you just sort of bring this one down. I'll go around there and that'll probably go a bit lower. Get your wee windows there, start projecting back the way. And that goes back like that. That's the back of the wall. Okay, so once you, you get the lines done like that, just try and get the dry the brush wet, you know, dry it and just wet it with white, fresh white, and just get all your bearings in where it happens to go. That's the roof, that's the side, which is mixed a bit with brown there, but that's okay. I'll let that dry and I'll go back to that. And then you're coming back here with this. So that lets you do a colour on there as well. So there's no harm putting a wee bit of white in at the now. And I'm not going to fill these bits in with white now so that you can see where I'm going with it. In fact, what I might do is 
might knock that window back just a wee bit more. Put that onto that block. That's a wee bit better. And when that's dry, I'll go back and give you the detail. So again, I'm just shaking my brown and my blue. That's quite a good outline. And the thing is, you want your boats to sort of overlap. You don't want them all sitting separate. So there's a wee base on that one. There's a wee top. You won't see that unless I do that white. Because it's against the, the wall of the harbour. So there's a wee bit like that. Like that. But I need to go back with the darker colour to see that now. So you get this sort of coming up like this. We point it up on there. And then you've got the base of the hole coming right round like that. And as I say, you can see I've got all that line a wee bit. But get the white and just block it right away. So get it sort of colour, not the colour, the base of your boat so that you know what everything's going to be. That's going to be white and that's going to be white but I'll put some colours on them. Okay. Now if you could take your small brush and get your harbour ball just in between you and that helps to show your lines that you're looking for there. Okay. And the same at the other bit. That helps to show the line in your boat off when you get better as well. So a lot of the negative space helps to get the shape of the boats as well. So you don't need to see the particular for now. Okay. Now as you get further back they get a bit smaller. So I'm just going to do a small boat in here first. Sometimes you just need a small brush just to fill it in. So that's white. And that's white. Now what I'll start doing is I'll put some colour on something to separate that bolt from the other bolt. And then I can go in there with like, the paint grey inside that one just so that you can see it's separate. Now you'll have the light hitting this, but some of it will have a wee bit of shadow on it, coming from both sides. So when you're coloring it in like this, when it's really wet, some of the colours, just so that they don't smudge into one another, just make sure that you, you get them in. Put your wee outline on it. And this is good for doing the shadow, which means the shape of that off better. Okay, so as a whole, I'll just put some colours in. I'm not too bothered about it being exact same as that one there. I'm just going to put a wee colour in just so that you can see where I'm going with this. Okay, now. Get another wee bolt sitting here. So I'm going to put my sharp line in first. Just watch me not too long with this. So you could go on and on doing all these wee bolts. I'll move over to the other side in a minute and do some more bolts and then we'll see how we got on with that. Your wee windows again, and your wee rooftop. So, almost goes in to make a point, but not quite at the back. And that gets coloured in. Well, oh, it's all the shadows are in, that looks better. So, over here a wee bit, if you look at some of these, are just at the end of this. 
So we'll just kind of keep that for the remainder of these space. So it's quite nice uh, for the composition just to leave a wee space now and again. So this is the back end of a wee long boat here. And it's got the wee bit going up. And this dips down and comes back up to meet that. And then the one at the bottom dips down and it comes back up to meet it before it goes to the end. And that's that wee long boat in. So I'm just going to put a wee white line in there and in there. And a little bit of light there because that's where my light's going to sit. And I'll probably have a wee bit of light in there as well. So again, we can take a small brush and you can just use a wee bit of the yellow coat and a little bit of the red and just to tone it a wee bit, a little bit of brown. So that's just kind of putting the bases of this in now. And although I've got a highlight there, I still need a bit of the colour of the bottom as well. And then a little bit of maybe these will have some highlights on them too. So I'm just going to clean my brush. Actually, I'm going to that in there. Um, so there'll be some dark lines first before the highlights. So there'll be some dark lines going under there. down there, like that. Some on the side just to show you where everything is. Okay, and then just wet the brush, dot it with a bit of white. And this is probably best going on where it's dry, but you don't want to drag that all the way around. So if you put a wee bit there and just drag a wee bit with your brush, the end of your brush, you just want a little bit there and then You'll have quite a wee bit here. And then just drag your brush because you don't want it as an outline all the way up. And just use the corner of your brush before you get to the end. And a wee bit around there. That's just for the card. And then you want to get into the dark blue and the brown together this time. Quite sharp. And you're just kind of going in between. Try and keep the water showing as well. I'm going to use a bit of the paint grey because it's a wee bit darker. A bit wet than I The darker that is, the better for your highlights coming through. Put a bit of this. So, as I say, when it's dry, all these wee bits come back up. So, I'll do one or two boats over here, and then we'll be back and do one or two there. And I'll show you how to do the sails and things like that. Quite handy if you've got a wee sharpie pen, there's a couple of ways of doing the sails. Um, you can use a ruler and a sharpie pen and then cut them down with your palette knife for a bit of highlight on them. Or there's a few different ways. Right, so these wee boats here, they come from before that. So I've got one, two there, and we'll just see the room I've got. So these will be much smaller because they're further away. So they're kind of pointing out to the sea a wee bit. So I'm just going to sort of do that now with a wee flat bit. Run it like that. And take the corner of your brush, not right to the end. It's like as if you're drawing a wee bass. So you're doing that, and then you're doing another one, leave a wee gap. Pointing out to the sea like that. These come down at a wee angle, wee flat bit at the bottom. And just before you get to the end, make it meet there. And right away, just get your white in, just to define the lines where they're wet now. So that's an easy way of putting them in. All right, and then you can use your white just to set across there, and there, and there, and there. And you could use your colour, maybe a little bit paint green and yellow for something just to fill in the negative spaces. So 
So you're doing it this way, you're kind of using your outline that you've just drew to sort of fill in the gaps. And if you get a bit left, you can still do that as well. That gives it a wee base. But as I say, they're a bit wet and then the back and put wee highlighters on it like that when it's a bit dry, but if they're small like that, you need to give it a wee bit more time. But just make sure you've got light coming through round about them like that. That one can have a wee bit more of a point on it. Okay, so I'll show you how to do these wee boats. So when I show you how to do these wee boats here, I see that they're in there as well, and there's another one in there, so I um, can't mind which brush I used originally to do these, but we'll just do it like this and then. So you've got like a four shot, and you're just really seeing the front of them, put that one down like that. And that's going up, and that's going up, so they kind of meet at the corner like that. And then you go up to the top, not too high up, and it sort of comes out, and you don't actually see the whole lot of that. So I'll show you how to get that in a minute. Again, you're probably best just filling them in white there. You'll be using most of the white anyway. That's a wee bit thick. Just watch if it's a small area that's not too thick. So you've got that in there. You're going up like that and you're picking up some of the blue, which is ideal because that's going in as a shadow right there. And I've probably got enough of that white there to pull back up. Maybe not. Just add a wee bit more white. And just drag it round, but not all the way round. And then you've got wee bits of white in here as well. So that shows up the lines and the shape of the boat that you've just drawn. So if you feel you've went wrong anywhere in any of the lines, you can dip this, you know, you can dip it in and out to suit yourself. So again, I'll just do another one of them. So here we go. Just make sure your brush doesn't chunky paint that's on it. So leave a wee gap. Do a wee line, wee line down the way, another wee line down the way like that. And then from that base, come up, come up, close it at the side, and the side, like that. And then just go to the top, like that. Make that line, meet that line. And make that line, meet that line. Okay, so a wee bit, a wee bit your colour underneath that for shadow. So you do these kind of flat to begin with round about the, the drawing of your boat. Just keep it nice and chunky. That's Paisley and Blue I'm using now. Now if you've got another boat there you won't see all of that. So I'll just put another boat there you now in that colour. So that's one there. I'll go back and call that one in a minute. Um, this one's sort of going back a wee bit. Do you look bigger this ball? Wee flat bit there. And before you come to the front of the boat there, just bring it down and make it meet that line there. And that's when you know this is the base that line here is the base of the boat so that all the lines are meeting that. I'm just using that colour just to create the shadow. As the boats get nearer you, the, the reflections will start to sort of drop down a wee bit more. It's just when it's projected away from you a wee bit like that, the lines will look more projected like that. So, but there is still a wee bit of projection in it, so there's like that. So I'm just going to draw the seat in there and in there. What I should probably do is put a highlight on the top of that for the 
you see you can do the darker. So everything else on the side of the boat is darker. So you can go a bit sort of blue, brown, purple, whatever you like, as long as it's darker. And it brings all these out. Ready, a wee bit white just for the end again. And that's a wee bit chunky, but that's all right. And so is this. So I'm going to wash the brush because I've got plenty there to move around. So that white can come right up like that because there's a wee set of bow on it there. And then a little bit of white that's there. So I'm not coming around there. And I'll go back over the detail. So just to finish it off there, a wee bit of white there as well. Okay. So I'm going to do this wee bow up here. So again, it's quite similar to those ones here. So you're just doing a wee sort of line here. Okay, it's a wee bit watery, just watch it's not too watery. Just use anything that's dark, it doesn't, I'm not particularly sticking to the one colour. So because I'm seeing mostly this side of the boat, I only need to bring it down a little bit on that side, like that. And then this side here, as that sort of goes down, this kind of goes up and round like that. And then it's just, it's going to be sort of bevel there. Now you won't see the other bit because it's against the dark wall, so I'll do a fight for that. Yeah, there's quite a lot in this picture, but it's quite fun to do if you stick at it. Just do it in bits. So this one has got a kind of deeper red here. That's quite chunky, so just watch small details, don't use chunky brushes, just a tiny bit. And just come down there. Uh, and I'm only going to go halfway around because I'm going to put light on that. And I'll fill the other side in because you won't see that and it will look darker anyway. Okay. So I'm just going to wash that off, put a wee bit of light on that. Right, so I'm going to put some colour in here and some shadows in here. And then I might just let you just get on with the rest of it and I'll do another wee bit here. And you'll see the finished bit that it's done, but I'll do a wee bit here first. There's a couple of those wee boats there, so they're, they're quick and easy to do. But I'll just get this wee reflection in first. So I'm always going round about the bottom of the boat, just at the front there. And because you can still see a wee bit of that colour in the boat, I'll just put a tiny wee bit of that. I like the paint's grey because it gives it a nice sharpness right round about the boat. And I've based a wee bit blue there, as you can see that just makes it darker, which is what I was looking for. So, there's a couple of these wee boats here, and I'll just try and outline them now. And you don't see them, it is white there. These are done very rough, but I'm going to be going back in and do some detail. And then I think there was a nice greenish one here as well, somewhere. And even though that's that colour, you're going to have like a sort of lemony white for the highlight there. But it's actually good fun going back into all this when it's all dry and just picking up all your wee details and your, your lights and everything, it's, it's quite nice to do. So a couple of these, again we line down there, line down there, line gap where we close it at both sides 
And that's quite high up, this one, so there's just a wee dot there. Right, so we're just going to finish off some little wee bits. I've just been doing a bit of detail there, uh, as you can see, because it takes too long um, for it to be on the whole time. Um, so one of the wee things that I did there was the wee uh, floats, the wee boy things. So what I did, I did wee white dots like this on the wall, and that gives you a nice base to put your red on. So I'll just do one there just to show you. So there's one there. So. There's, there's one, two, maybe three on each boat, you know, so let me do one there as well. And we'll just let them dry and then we'll just go in with a bright red. And it's quite good because it's quite good that you've done it white because you don't have to completely cover the whole thing. A wee bit of white show will show a wee bit of highlight, so keep the red near the bottom. And if it's on a red boat like that, we'll put a wee shadow beside it so that it shows up. But you can show a wee bit of the red as well, uh, the white. That one will be a wee bit wet yet. So you can just go in like that. And that just makes your picture look a wee bit busy. The other thing that I did as well, pressure on that. The other thing that I did as well, I took the shaft of pen with a ruler. You can do it with a paintbrush if you like. And I just did a few sort of sails going up like that. And then I took my flat brush with a wee bit of white and I just put a couple of wee sort of just breaking into some of them. Not all of them, but just breaking into some of them a wee bit. And again, it just makes that whole area look a bit busier. And it's through these rubber back as well. And I filled in some of these. Just a mixture, all the light, the gable sides of the wee houses or whatever, uh, cabins or uh, boat houses, should all be light coming in from the right there. Okay, and then darker at the front. They, they may be a wee bit too dark, but what you can do is just put a wee, a wee wash of white over them, just wash it, and that just cools them back down again. But, you know, just kind of water it, but don't um, don't take it away altogether, just something like that. Okay, so that's that bit done. Did a wee bit more detail in the boat. Still got a wee bit more to do. Get all the reflected lines in. That one here still get one in. So I do, I was using a flat brush. I found it a wee bit easier. So I was using my dark colour there. Maybe paint's grey and the darkest blue. And just kind of set a wee flat line first, as if it's going round the boat. And then just start using the corner of the brush. Bring that down like that. Sharpen up some of these. Sometimes there's certain things that you have to go back into over a couple of times. Like I have to keep going back and brighten up the whites on the boats. And you'll probably need to do that. But it's just the more layers of acrylic that you put on, the better it looks. So um, you can see that was faded a wee bit, but it might have just been because I was working on the water a wee bit more. Okay, so. Okay, and then when, when you get your colours in there, divide it a wee bit dark between the water and the boat first, just before your colour goes in. And then when I was finished it, I put a wee bit more dark in these and then when I let that dry and then just went over it with my misty brush as you saw me doing earlier there. Okay, so that's, that's it all done. And this here, I think I did that with, here's the wee sparkles, I think I did that earlier. 
But just in case I didn't, I'll just show you a wee tiny bit of that. So a big brush, try and have it quite dry. Maybe use a flapper, especially just to dry it a wee bit. Because you want it spaced out like that. And then just tip a couple of wee bits of white, wee speckles. And all you're doing is just wee speckles like that. And as I say, if you overdo them, don't worry about it. You just go back in and do the same thing. Good luck. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to seeing them all. Okay, bye-bye.